Welcome to the live stream, everyone. It is Wednesday night for me and whatever day of the week it is for you when you're watching this or if you're watching this live. Thank you so much for being here. We are going to talk tonight about the modern kitchen puzzle I'm trying to solve that. What I mean is we're going to look at the modern kitchen in we are going to piece together the puzzle pieces, if you will, that make up what that kitchen design style looks like. Now, when I was a kid, or even when I was older, I'd go to my grandmother's house. She lived on a farm, and she would have this um, big puzzle laid out on her dining room table. Massive, massive table. It must have been, you know, one of those thousand-piece puzzles. And I just remember seeing it, being in awe of just the the sheer chaos of puzzle pieces. And then as you'd go back from time to time, that puzzle would start to, to form. The little pieces would be put together. And so all of a sudden now the, the chaos on the on the table started to resemble the box. And eventually that puzzle you know, became finished. And I don't know what you do with it after that. You throw it away. But when I think about kitchen design, it's often like a big puzzle sometimes. It's it can seem like chaos. It can seem like what is it that we want to do with this design, with this renovation, with this new build, with this DIY project, whatever it may be. And if we know the key components of the puzzle and where to put them, where to place them and how to go about it, then we can at least get something that resembles the, the box, the picture of the box that's in our minds or the thing that we see that we want to emulate with our kitchen design. So tonight we're going to talk about that. Now, You'll notice my pinned comment says, hey, everyone, enter M hashtag MTKD, and you have a chance to win the comment of the night. Now, how's that going to look? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to see a screen that looks like this later on. I'll hit draw. It randomly selects a comment if you have hashtag MTKD. Now, I would like to say that you should reserve this for the best comment or question uh, that you have. Now, you can do multiple ones, but uh, if you have a, a really good comment, if you have a really good zinger for me, if you have a really good question, hashtag MTKD, it'll be entered into the draw. Of course, you can put it in any comment. It doesn't matter. And uh, we will draw at the end. I see a bunch of you putting it in already. So that's awesome. So thanks so much for being here live as we're watching this now, as we're getting into this. I want to jump right in to the modern kitchen puzzle. What we're going to do go through is the modern kitchen design style. And then at the end, we'll talk about uh, the four key components, the four you know, corners, I guess, of function. So when you are designing a kitchen, much like you're putting together a puzzle, I always look for the corners and I look for the edges. Those are the easiest ones to start with. And so we're going to talk about that as well in a little while. So I hope you like my analogy or, you know. I thought it was clever. So let's just jump into this one and uh, we will we will go for it. So this is the modern kitchen puzzle and we want to uh, we want to talk about this. Isn't that cool? That's AI generated. It's amazing what, <laughs> what AI can do. So this is the modern kitchen puzzle and we're we're talking about the the modern kitchen design style and uh, of course this can be a little bit of a crossover to, you know, maybe contemporary or you know, just, but just that modern style. When you think modern kitchen, uh, what comes to your mind? So what are, what's going to happen is you're going to see some pictures and there's 15 of these puzzle pieces that we want to put together so that we can come up with a, um, you know, picture of what the modern kitchen would look like. So if you're interested in designing a modern kitchen, these are the components, the pieces that you'd want to put together. And then maybe in future live streams, we will also do other uh, kitchen design styles you know, farmhouse, or we can do contemporary or traditional, whatever it may be. I thought tonight we'd start with with modern. So what you'll see is a picture on your screen. We'll do a few pictures to see if you can maybe guess what the first puzzle piece is when you're looking at these. Now, <laughs> some of these, may maybe I, I can give you a hint as we go along, and some of these will be, you know, more challenging to figure out, and some of them are quite obvious. Of course, when you think about modern kitchen design style, you think of white you know, high gloss basically with a slab door. So remember that because those are some of the pieces that will come up in a little bit. But as we look at this picture and, you know, we, we go through what it is that the modern kitchen design style has. Now, this, this is a little bit different, this particular one, but if you just look through a few of these. I'll show you this one. There's something about 
the three of these pictures so far that that have something kind of in common. Some of these will be like, Mark, what are you doing? And some of them you'll get right away. And uh, so just take a quick look. This is a beautiful one. So I want you to just notice, I'll give you a hint. Look at the, the gray and white. We have um, the gray. We have the white with the, the other, you know, the wood tone. And we have the all white. So one of the key staples, one of the key puzzle pieces to the modern kitchen design style, and number one, which these aren't in a particular order, is uh, the neutral color palette. So most times, now, little caveat here, this will be most times, and by no means does, do, do, do you have to have all of these, but these are essential elements to the modern kitchen design. If you're going to have a modern kitchen design style, then you are probably going to be looking at neutral colors. Now, does that mean that they all have to be that way? Not by any means. I think a lot of things come together when we think of modern kitchen design style. But if we want to stick to, you know, what the, the picture on the puzzle box looks like in terms of modern kitchen design, neutral colors are definitely the things um, or the colors that you'd want to go through. The grays, maybe the maybe even beiges, uh, definitely white, even, you know, black. Is black neutral? I don't know. I think it is. But we see a lot of black in, in modern design. But definitely whites, definitely uh, grays are in there. And so that is number one, to have a modern kitchen. You definitely want to look at having neutral colors. Now, let's check the next one. This one's pretty easy. You should be able to get this one right away. And uh, you'll see this in some uh, modern kitchens, and you, you won't see it in others. But this is one of the staples that we see a lot of um, in modern kitchen design. And this can, these can cross over to other design styles as well, but this is definitely one that um, that you can definitely see. And by all means, if you think you know what it is, you know you can put that in the chat as well. Uh, if you want to answer the the question before we get there, you know, especially when it, it comes to opening doors and drawers, if you haven't gotten that already, uh, in modern design style, <laughs> if you don't get this one, I don't know what to tell you. You're not starting off on a good foot. And yeah, it's oversized handles. We do see a lot of the oversized handle trend coming up in modern kitchen design. So if you want your kitchen to look modern, that is one of the puzzle pieces that definitely helps is to have these very sleek, very long uh, handles. And usually it's these kind of more integrated ones, though they can be something that's attached to the door. You know, I'm not a fan of this, by the way, if you have followed me for any length of time or you've heard me say this before, I'm not a super fan of having anything like that uh, in a kitchen, but I'm not a super fan of modern kitchen design either. I like it. It looks beautiful and, you know, obviously it looks beautiful, but not not my exact thing that I like. So this oversized handle, definitely something that you want to incorporate in your kitchen if you're trying to design a modern kitchen, write these down. These are the puzzle pieces that you're going to want to have. So this next one should be fairly obvious as well. It's a very modern looking kitchen. And a lot of these pictures, there's overlap, of course. The, 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 some of these key components are in all of these pictures uh, to some degree. And this one here is fairly obvious. Maybe you'll definitely notice it in this next one. And that's pretty cool, a little pretty cool feature uh, that we see a lot of in modern kitchens. Check that out. So if you haven't guessed it by now, you know, of course, in the kitchen, it is important that you can see what you're doing. Uh, you know, that's that's definitely a, a, not only a function of, you know, style, but of function. You have to be able to see what's going on. And so having lighting and in particular the ambient light is something that we see a lot of in modern kitchen design so not only just task light not only you know lights that are used for a particular purpose but just lights for the sake of lights in interesting places like in the reveal underneath the countertop like this picture you know of course this is task lighting but you know it's a, it's a full bar across that area and then lights in just different places underneath the toe kick you know in different shelves or inlaid into you know specific ends of cabinets or shelves or you know pieces of your kitchen having these uh, lightings is you know essential i say essential it's, i don't know if it's essential but it's definitely a key component that really works check out the ceiling here if you missed that one but there's lights inlaid in that ceiling which is really cool and so these are all just you know really a really strong feature of the modern kitchen design of course you can bring these into uh, other 
design styles, you know, by all means. But uh, for the for the kitchen puzzle that is modern, this will definitely get you three tenths of the way there. Ambient lighting. All right, let's see if you can check out this new this next one. Now, let's see if you can guess. So this has the long handles as well. Um, you know, this has, uh, but there's a key, there's something here that you'll notice and, and you'll start to see it as we keep going on. Uh, you can sort of see it here, though one of them isn't. A little hint for you. All right, let's go to the next one here. You know, every every kitchen, I always kind of say this about kitchen design, that the kitchen design, the layout, is really a bunch of boxes that surround appliances. And we design kitchens around appliances. That's the whole purpose of a kitchen is to cook food, keep food, store food, clean up food. And so then, then the cabinet, the layout is all about how do we arrange those cabinets around the appliances and where those appliances are. So there's this really, you know, relationship, I guess, between the appliances and the cabinets that makes up the kitchen layout. And you'll notice that in all of these pictures that they are stainless appliances. Now, save for one, of course, and, and maybe many of these, the other feature could be a paneled appliance, which is also uh, maybe something that could be in modern kitchen, but it's not essential. That can be in just about any kitchen design style. But you will notice a lot of modern kitchens have a stainless steel uh, style for their appliances. And, you know, I maybe, maybe it's just me. I kind of think stainless steel is old school. It's, you know, it was trendy in the early 2000s. How really modern is it? But it's still a very modern design style when it comes to appliances. If you want to have that modern look. You know what? I'm going to throw up the banner just in case y'all miss the comment. Make sure you hit hashtag MTKD in your comment to have a chance to win. Comment of the night. <laughs> Maybe we'll do multiple draws. There's only 11 entries so far. So come on, let's get this going. I'm going to have a whole bunch of entries. Two of those are mine, which I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to delete that. All right. So stainless steel appliances. Let's go. Let's go to the next one. See how you're doing. All right. This one might be less obvious, but uh, you can have a look at the range. That might give you a clue for this. Whenever you're cooking, it's important to protect the wall behind you so that, uh, you know, all your spaghetti sauce doesn't ruin the wall. So you need to have something there. And you can see it in this one as well. Very beautiful. Matches the countertop. Hint, hint. And it obviously adds a look to the kitchen that is, you know, upscale. And depending on how you do it, even ultra modern, like this particular one here, which I actually think is gorgeous. I love black and white kitchens like this. When done right, uh, they're really done right. But if you guessed it, minimalist backsplash. Now you could maybe argue with me, and I'll let you do that. That these are not so much. Um, but you know, this to me, this is a pretty minimal backsplash. It, it, I love the height of this one. I mean, this is a pretty modern-looking kitchen, and uh, up behind the the range, which is a very nice function. And um, you know, this just is beautiful. So, so, you, so what I mean by this is not subway tile. I guess is the way to, uh, that I'm trying to say. Usually you won't see a subway tile in a modern kitchen. You'll see something more sleek, especially something like this uh, in the modern kitchen design. That doesn't mean you can't have subway tile in a modern kitchen. This, this just looks more of that particular design style. So if you're going for that look, that is the piece of the puzzle. You don't want to lose on, you know, on the floor underneath the radiator. So when everything's done, you're like, oh no, it's not finished. You hate that? The one missing piece. Minimalist. All right, let's go to this one. See if you can figure one, what this one is here. Now, this might not be a fair picture because it has nothing to do with the roundedness or anything like that. And uh, But have a close look at these cabinet doors. And there's something that they're missing or there's something that's integrated into them that will give you a really good clue on what it is that really is a staple of the modern kitchen design. And... Um, We'll go to this one here. So 
there's there's a couple ways to do this. Laura got it. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. I'm, in my opinion, having integrated handles or no handles, uh, so push to open or some kind of servo drive operated, you know, function of opening cabinet doors is definitely the most modern way to go. So although you can have uh, elongated handles uh, that are visible, this really uh, suits the bill for having a functional design. So no handles and cabinet doors or integrated handles. So they're, they're just part of the door. You don't really notice that they're there. And that gives you that, that ultra sleek modern look that um, many people love. And you'll see in all the magazines these days. Okay, let's do it. This one here. Now, there's when you think of modern kitchens, there's something that in my opinion, is really the, the pinnacle of what a modern kitchen design would be. And if you can figure it out from these pictures, oh no, this isn't the one, this is a different one. This goes, for, okay, so sorry, this one can go for uh, many different styles. So this has integrated handles as well, very sleek, uh, but there's something about these kitchens. Um, I, I'll give you a hint, you can see the couch. <laughs> you can You can see that it's, you can see there's stuff behind there, that island. It's not cramped into a, a room. Oh, you can you can see that this was taken in an, in another room where you can step back. Did you guess what it is yet? Yeah, it's open concept. No, this is definitely not, you know, only something that belongs to the modern kitchen. Every kitchen design, basically, maybe other than like a galley style kitchen, but that's more of a layout feature. It would be that you can have an open concept, open plan kitchen and a modern kitchen design is no different. So although this doesn't specifically belong in the category of a modern kitchen, it definitely lends itself uh, to making this design style really, you know, that wow feature. So you can see this kitchen because it's supposed to be something that's visual and the the design style is something that you know is is not a matter of you know is my garbage can next to my sink it's how does this look and i want people to see it or i want to see it when i'm sitting on that couch back there so open concept is definitely something you want to consider for for many reasons okay let's check this one out let's see if you can see what these pictures have in common now this would definitely okay so this is something that I would say every modern kitchen has. And it's it's not the color, it's not the high glossiness of these, but it is something that all of these kitchens have in common, whether they're wood grained or white, or whether they're black or whatever this color is, slate, or or horizontal wood grain, or whether they're white again. Slab style doors. Slab door styles uh, is definitely, that screams modern. That is what modern looks like. When you go to the Ikea showroom and you see this, you know, modern slab doors, that's that's what it is. Does that mean that you can't have a different door style? I'm going to argue and say, I think if you want to have the modern do the modern kitchen, you have to have the modern door style of a, of a slab door. Now, can this door style fit into other design styles? Certainly, I think it can. But I think that if you have a raised panel or a beaded door or a shaker door, you're into other territories. So just keep that in mind if you want, you know, the modern, the modernness of this. And that vent is very modern too. So that's cool. Slab door style, very good. How are we doing? Let's keep going. This one you can argue, this doesn't make a modern kitchen. But we're in modern times and modern times have modern things and those modern things have been integrated into our kitchens in such a way that they're connected to every other thing in our house and our phone and our watch and our neighbor's phone and our neighbor's watch and we can connect these things from the grocery store or when we're in the car or when we're on vacation definitely not something that makes or breaks the modern kitchen, but hard to deny the fact that they're so prevalent, we might not like them, but there will come a day when you don't have a choice, unless you're gonna buy your appliances at a Goodwill store, 
if you're going to buy new appliances, they're going to have some element of this. And I think you're guessing what it is already, but I want to go through these pictures because they're so cool. Look at this one. Wow. Of course, this is just something I ripped off the internet. You imagine if your kitchen looked like this. The smart technology is, um, again, not, not a key component. Maybe it's, it, you know, in the, in the picture of the puzzle, you know, there's the sky maybe. There's one piece of sky there. It's just blue amongst all these other pieces. Like, how are you going to find that piece? Like, if you didn't have that piece, it wouldn't make or break the puzzle. But if it was a, a puzzle of, like, a person's face, and you're, like, missing the piece, like, their eye or something, be like, ah, oh, that's kind of an important part. I think smart technology is the piece of the puzzle we could miss, but it's still in there. Think about that. That was deep. <laughs> Let's go. I don't know what number we're on. Oh, this one screams. This next one screams modern design. And if you know what it is, put it in the comments. And you can you can really see it in this picture. You can you can see it in this picture as well. This is something that creates a reflection. It's something that really makes or breaks the modern design kitchen. Oh, Laura, you put in a you put in something that we haven't got there yet, but that's coming up. How about this one? Yeah, I mean that's sort of that's sort of your answer there, Laura. Uh, but that's not what I'm going for. Think about the reflection here, people. Come on, it's high gloss. High gloss kitchen cabinets is really a staple of modern design. This is what you know. You look at you're like, oh, this could be ultra modern, maybe. You know, there's you can put the word modern in front of a whole bunch of other words and, you you know, change the design style completely. So ultra modern would be really high gloss slab, no handles. I mean, these have handles, but that is a, a definite staple of the modern design style. This one here has an element, too, that we'll get to in a minute. But uh, that backsplash is beautiful. It, um, you know, it's no integrated handles. It's high gloss. You have the interesting light effect. I'm sure those appliances are smart as can be, smart little appliances, and uh, very high IQ on those appliances. And so it's um, something that if you, if you go to a cabinet maker, manufacturer, designer, um, and you say, hey, I want a modern kitchen, right away they'd be like, okay, well, you want high gloss slab, probably no handles. Um, that would get that that would be like the stepping, the first few steps into this, and. Um, Without those, you won't have a, a modern looking kitchen. All right, let's keep going with this one. Now, this next one, um, you know, this can come in different elements. So it doesn't have to be in a particular place, but it has to do with a particular look that, that can definitely be, be included. If you look here, there's a certain element in these kitchens. And uh, you can argue that these aren't ultra modern, but they're, they're very modern nonetheless. Um, this is really, really pretty kitchen. And we'll look at this one. This one sort of gives it away a little bit better. So we'll go back here and just have a quick look. Check the backsplash, the floor, the backsplash again. Um, an element that definitely, uh, <laughs> well, it's it's not wood, but uh, that's a good one too, actually. It is a geometric shape. So the, the use of of just different shapes. Of course, this island has a unique feature to it. The way that kitchen is, uh, you know, you know, just, I don't know, just return into that wall. It's like, you know, something obviously different. This backsplash is floor. So the use of geometry, the way these cabinets are built, the backsplash, even the use, the, even the, the size and placement of those rectangular and square shelves give this a particular feel and you'll often see that a lot in in modern kitchen just the use of some of these geometric shapes and of course aside from the cabinetry uh, this is something that really stands out to be modern you'd look at this and you're not this doesn't scream farmhouse this doesn't scream you know traditional or transitional it it really screams modern so i think that uh that is something you want to look for to to, to you know, to really make that modern kitchen. Now, I will say this, and I'll just go back here. I would say you don't want to overdo it with the geometric shapes. You, you don't need to have an island like this. In my opinion, this this is overkill. Um, 
why? <laughs> like, like other than just, I want to have something that looks very unique, very, you know, one, there's only one of these maybe. And, uh, and so that would be a, a good reason to do that. But you don't want to overdo it with the, with the geometric shapes and the geometric application, but it's something that you definitely can include to give it that element uh, of geomet ge geometry. Very good piece of the puzzle. Let's keep going. A couple more. All right. Laura answered. Oh, yeah, you answered this one all. You answered this one previously, but this is something that we see in uh, modern kitchens as well. And be, be, And this has to do with just offsetting the fact that Modern kitchens can sometimes just look like a hospital or bland. And so you need something to, to liven that up, brighten it up, or pop it up a little bit. And so this is something that we see uh, in modern kitchen design uh, to just bring it to life a little bit. You have these neutral colors, you have these slab doors, you have this kind of very sleek look, and sometimes you want a little bit of personality. And um, if you check out that, that chair that tells you all about it right there, and if you look here, you'll see it as well with the yellow. And of course, that's just uh, monochromatic accents. So just adding pops of color, okay, to your kitchen. Adding something that that takes away from the starkness of the white, the black, the gray, the beiges, the neutral color palette, and, and an element of surprise in the kitchen. Like, oh, I wasn't expecting that one green chair. But it's really a cool feature. Um, and I just think that's... That's interesting. Just having something in your kitchen that that stands out. That's it, it could be a color, it could be an element even. But in this particular one, it's color. And again, this doesn't have to be just in the modern kitchen, but definitely adds a a, a function, uh, not function, but it adds a feature that uh, allows you to just you know just like oh wow, that's pretty cool. And I like when when that happens. Now this is maybe overdoing it. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if that's real. Um, but uh, that's the idea. Very, very interesting monochromatic accents. All right, where are we at? Well, I think we're getting close to the end. This one here. Uh, yes, let's keep going. See if you can figure this one out. And I'll just get my camera back. So far, so good with the camera tonight. No uh, major catastrophes. All right, let's keep it going. Can you see it? So this one, this one's the, the probably the most difficult. So I want you to look at the overall picture, and there's a definite trend towards um, not having a lot of stuff. I'll, I'll give you that hint: not having a lot of stuff. And um, and I doubt that that vase, vase, whatever you want to call it, jug of dead-looking plants is usually there. Um, I bet it's even cleaner than this normally. Check this out. It's very, very clean looking. I know these are pictures, and obviously in pictures you, you clean up and you curate and, and whatnot. But this definitely is something that lends itself to the modern kitchen. Of course, it's just minimal decor. Minimalism, of course, is you know, kind of maybe one of the offshoots of the modern kitchen doesn't have to be minimalistic, but it does lend itself. The modern kitchen does lend itself to minimalism in a really nice way, just because there's when well, there's no handles, there's, there's no design on the door. It's very sleek. It's very simple or, you know, simple looking, maybe not, not definitely not simple in terms of the design, but in terms of the look and the style. All right. So this is definitely something to consider, minimal decor. So if you like a lot of stuff, if you like a lot of hanging plants and hanging things on the wall and you like a lot of things, that's awesome. That's just probably going to clutter up your modern kitchen look if that's what you're going for. Might not be the design style that you want to have. Now, in saying any of these things, this is your kitchen, so you can do whatever you want with it because at the end of the day, that's really what matters. But uh, we just want to stick to the, the key pieces here in this in this live stream so we can we can decorate and design our kitchen the most modern way possible. All right. Let's see what we got here. Now, I'm going to I'm kind of arguing this one. I put it in here but I, I don't even know if I agree with myself. But I think it I think it belongs. You let me know in the comments once we get there. You can tell me what you think this is. Somebody already mentioned it before on something else and um 
we can we can see what this is. I'll just have a quick look here through these. All have something very much in common. And uh, although it's in a modern kitchen, this feature, I don't, I just don't know. Obviously, it's something that we talk about a lot on my channel. I include it a lot when we're talking about trends and uh, you guys love them or hate them. You know, there seems to be no middle ground. So have a look at this one. I actually kind of like this one because it involves an element of geometry <laughs> a little bit better. Uh, any, any ideas? Anybody out there? Have a quick look. I'll give you a hint. Um, dust, bugs, and spiders. Well, spiders are bugs. Well, they're not insects. They're uh, arachnids. So that's your clue. Grease. <laughs> you got it. It's floating shelves or open shelves. So do these belong in a modern kitchen design style? And that will come down to personal preference and how they're curated. This is a very modern kitchen, has very much the elements of a modern kitchen. It has some monochromatic you know, elements. It's the neutral tone. It's got high gloss. It's got integrated handles, uh, very sleek backsplash. It's got stainless steel appliances, and it has open shelves. So you can't add the open shelves and take away all the rest of that stuff. It still looks very modern. And so there you go. floating shelves. Gotta love them. All right, let's take this one here. I think we're getting close to the end of these ones, and then we'll jump into the four corners of function um, that we'll talk talk about. And uh, so you can look at the island in this one. This will give you a hint. Something that every kitchen has to some degree, and, and the particular material can be... Uh, you know, can be different. There's no exact material, though I name an exact material here, but it doesn't have to be the one I name later on in a minute. You can see this one here. You got the the longer handles. You got the interesting backsplash. It's quite nice. Uh, some ele all of these have some elements of the modern design style, but these have, you know, and and it's not just the waterfall edge. So there's the big hint. You get it? Did you get it yet? It's quartz countertop. And I'm taking back the fact that I wrote quartz because it does not have to be quartz countertop. It can be any type of countertop, really. It can be any type of, of, of stone. I think it comes down to more the pattern. You know, obviously, if you have some older type of granite like butter rum or uba tuba or something like that, uh, your kitchen's not going to be very modern looking. It's going to be like, oh, take me back to the 80s but um and even these veined countertops i wonder if they belong in you know modern kitchen but we'll give it away this definitely this one definitely is something that would would be modern then it has the backsplash that's different which i really like and again here with a different backsplash so that's an interesting feature and i think that's really cool and i like how they did the the range hood cover but Nonetheless, porcelain or some kind of uh, slab of a manufactured material or a decked in neolith ultra compact material, you know, maybe some quartzite or something like that could, or marble can be done in a modern kitchen. But I think when it comes down to it, this type of um, countertop would be, you know, something you could definitely do. Now, uh, I, I didn't mention laminate, but you could get away with laminate because there's so many options for laminate countertops in terms of color that you can. You can get high gloss laminates. I had one before. It was really what it was great. I never had any problems with it at all. It didn't, well, I shouldn't say it didn't scratch. It did scratch. You gotta be a little more careful with it, but it is something you can do. And um, we'll leave it at that. So, quartz or the like type of countertop. All right. So, let's talk about the four corners. Now, before we do that, let's see how we're doing with our entries. We've got 17 entries in our draw so far. So make sure you hit hashtag MTKD, even if you do it in multiple, I think it has to be lowercase. So uh, make sure it's a lowercase, just like it is there. Hashtag MTKD, put in your comment, your question, or, you know, you just, whatever it is you want to put in there. You can do multiple times. It doesn't matter. And later on, we will draw randomly and it'll select the winner. And then, I don't know, you'll get a prize in the mail. Probably not, but uh, it'll be fun. Go with it, okay? Just go with it. So we want to talk about the four corners of function. So after we get through 
you know, when we're starting a kitchen, maybe I should have started with this, but I thought, why, why, why not do it this way? Like I said, when we were trying to put together a puzzle, we want to have the corner pieces and the edges. And so the four corners of function are what I want to talk about. Now, of course, there's there's more elements to function than these four things, but these encapsulate kitchen function. And so this has to do more with, it doesn't matter if it's modern or contemporary or transitional, traditional, or you're just, you know, you, you got a bunch of boxes that you made out of pallets and you, you put them in a, in a room. Like it doesn't really matter the style of your kitchen. Your kitchen needs to be functional and it can be modern looking, but not be modern functionally. Uh, or it can be contemporary kitchen, but just be a mess. You can't work in it. And so the reason that a lot of people renovate their kitchens, one is it's just getting old, it's wore out, but also two is that it's, it doesn't function the way they want it to. They're, they're sick of that corner cabinet always broken with the lazy Susan. and they're sick of not being able to reach, uh, you know, the stuff on the top shelf. They're sick of all these different things. And so we definitely want to, or I want to include tonight, just some, some key elements to talk about, um, you know, these things are very important. So if, regardless, you can say, ah, I don't like the modern design anyway. Uh, it's not for me. It might not be for you, but this is for you if you're designing a kitchen. And so this is where you want to take some notes and we'll chat about these few things. I don't have a bunch of pictures for these, but we will just talk about them. And I hope you like my, uh, my little um, picture here with the four corners with the puzzle pieces. Yeah. Um, it's all up here. All right, four corners of function. The first one is this, and you guys all know these. This isn't something new, but these are definitely things that I just want to remind everybody, and we'll, I'll just keep reminding because this is really important. New people come onto the channel, or this might be your first live stream, and if it is, thanks so much for being here. And if this is your 50th live stream, thanks so much for being here. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, too, uh, when you come in the door. It uh, makes me feel good. <laughs> and uh, whatever. Uh but I want to just keep reminding us of these things. These are very important. So number one is counter space. And that can be in the form of, of different things. So you need counter space for landing area. You need counter space for prep area. You might need counter space for eating or socialize, socializing or, you know, when you're putting out trays of food at a birthday party or you have a lot of people around, you want to have as much counter space as you can, especially for prep, especially if you are you know, a family that has kids in school and you're prepping lunches the night before, you, you know, you like to bake, you like to can, you like to, whatever it is that you like to do in the kitchen, having as much counter space as, as possible is something you want to look for. Now, of course, there's a balance in this. You just can't have all counter space and not have, you know, other essential elements of a kitchen. But th this is something that's pinnacle and definitely a corner piece of the puzzle to designing a functional kitchen. And uh, this goes for a modern kitchen or a, a non-modern kitchen, you know, just a, whatever that looks like. So we want to make sure that we have uh, the ample amount of counter space, the amount of counter space that's right for what we need. Um, and I always say try to get, you know, as, as much as you can, but, you know, there's other corner pieces we're going to look at. So you need to have a place that you can, you know, you know, landing area is very important and ha making sure those are in the right spots next to sinks and ranges and, you know, around a fridge or other sp work task specific zones that are in your kitchen. And, um, and don't go, don't, don't, of course, you know, what I'm trying to say is don't skimp on the countertop, but you, you might have a smaller kitchen. You might only have enough room for so much countertop. So the key point is just having, you know, look through the NKBH NKBA guidelines, you need 36 inches of uninterrupted counter space. That's one of the guidelines. And that's just for prep. So the, 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 if you can get 36 inches, three feet of uninterrupted counter space, I don't know how many centimeters that is, forgive me. It's uh, it's waist high. If you can get that much waist high to a six foot one person, if you can get that much counter space, then you can, um, you know, according to most people say that you would have a pretty functional kitchen. And uh, so that's something to to keep in mind. So have some ample counter space is definitely, and it's something also that probably most people ask for when, you know, we're going through the design consultations or we're, we're talking about we're designing their kitchens. One of the things that people ask me for when designing kitchens, is I want more counter space. I want to have more space. Now that, that could be another conversation about decluttering or, you know, the way that counter space is used, but it is something that most people are saying, I want more of this. I don't have enough. I want more. And so it's definitely a key uh, corner piece of function. The next one is storage. 
storage and countertop go hand in hand together. Um, because generally, when you have countertop, you have storage underneath it. And you have storage in other places. But, uh, you know, so if you have a whole lot of countertop, chances are you'll have a whole lot of storage options depending on unless you have overhangs for seating or, you know, places if it's wheelchair accessible or something like that. But most times, nine times out of 10, or even for a lot of people, 10 times out of 10, they will have ample storage because they have ample counter space. And um, plus more because you have pantries and wall cabinets and open shelves and walk-in pantries and all these other types of things and closet down the hall. Storage is very important for food storage, obviously, for your Tupperware, for all the things that you have, you have to store. Now, when I talk to clients, one of the things that I try to have them assess is what, because someone asked me this recently, do I have enough storage? And the answer is, I, I don't know, because you have to look at what are the things that you are storing and the sizes of those things and what things are very important for you to store. Are you storing a crock pot or an Instapot or a, a some kind of fryer or you know coffee or whatever the case may be it's important that you um, have a place for that uh, to, to be stored and uh, and so then to to ca you know go down the list of these things here's what I have here's how big it is and it needs a cabinet to fit that so if you're doing a kitchen renovation then you have thought through that instead of what happens a lot and this happens a lot you get into your kitchen, you're like, all right, let's bring all of our stuff into the kitchen. And you're like, oh, this doesn't fit under my countertop. It doesn't fit in a drawer. It doesn't fit in my pantry. What am I going to do with this, you know, bread mixer thing? What am I supposed to do with this now? Just as I sit on my countertop? No, I'm trying to save countertop space. I'm not trying to, you know, have it all taken up by this big appliance. And I use it all the time. And I should have thought of that. And why didn't Mark work with me? I don't know. You, it's your choice. You can go to the website, www.mtkd.ca and grab one of my design options. <laughs> Shameless plug. So that is something to you to consider uh, for sure. Now let's go to this next one. And that is workflow. Workflow is essential for a functional kitchen. We can talk about the kitchen triangle and we have ad nauseum on the live stream in the past on different videos. And so it's important that uh, you do have a functional workflow. Call it whatever you want. Call it the triangle. Call it the quadrilateral or the trapezoid or the rhombus. Whatever you want to call it, it is workflow. And it comes down to how different appliances and stations in your kitchen work together. And then how those particular stations integrate with other stations or zones in your kitchen. So that the kitchen flows in a particular way that makes sense, that is user friendly, that, you know, can can put out the most amount uh, of food efficiently or clean up or whatever it is. And so workflow is highly important. You want to have think through work zones. You want to think through how do those zones work together and where should they be placed. Now, this is getting into the minutia of kitchen design where I think that's the right word. Minu minutia. I don't know. It sounds like it sounds smart. This is where you're getting into the nitty gritty of kitchen design and really working through Okay, the fridge is placed here versus here. It could go either places. What is, what is the best workflow for that fridge or that microwave or that dishwasher? I mean, that's a big one. I get comments all the time. The dishwasher is supposed to be on the right if you're right-handed. I'm like, well, where is it? Where is that ever written down at? No, it does not have to be on the right-hand side if you're right-handed. It has to be in the most functional place for you, the user. And even if you're right-handed, that might not be the best place in your kitchen layout doesn't have to be on the right hand side if you're right handed. So, okay, you can comment now all you want, <laughs> trash me with that one. But I am saying that workflow is important. If it's if your dishwasher or your trash or your sink, all of those things are important. And you can really fine tune how these things operate. When you start to visualize that design concept, when you see it in 3D or you put on a VR set and you just get in there like it's the real thing, that's something that can be done these days. You can just actually stand in your kitchen 3D and kind of look around and be like, oh, this will sort of make sense. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to this one, a lot of these things, you it's like a lot of times in life you learn as you go. And sometimes even the best designer and the best client working together There'll be something that when you get into your new kitchen, like, oh, I should have thought of that, or this would work better here. That could be something. So the more prep you can do in advance, 
to get that workflow spot on, the better off I think you're going to be. And the last one is this, and and this is definitely not the, you know, the most fun one. You know, nobody wants to talk about this one, but it is pinnacle. It is definitely one of the corners, and that is proper clearances. And if you're going to have a functional kitchen, you have to be able to move around in that kitchen, get to those storage areas, get to that countertop, get to, you know, the prep areas, you, you, you know, use the workflows that are there. This is something that is very important having proper clearances Now you can go by the standards. You can go by the, the guidelines and just look up those numbers and try to do that. And, or you can, you know, you can play with those a little bit at times. It's, it does come down to the, the user. And um, for instance, I had a client recently and, and they, um, they said like, we're, we're smaller people. They're just, they're, they weren't, they didn't have big stature. They were, they, that's how they, that's what they said. So it's not my words. They said, we're smaller people. And so we, we can get away with a smaller clearance. So if that's the case, then that's something you can consider, but make sure that you work through this to say, do I have proper clearances? This comes up a lot with islands. People have, and this is something that happened to me recently as well as someone asked, can I get a bigger island? And the answer was real, not, not really, because you, you're not going to have proper clearances. And that's, that's going to be really important for appliance doors being open, for getting around in that kitchen. If there's two people bumping into each other, even just walk through area it is important that you have the proper clearances again not not the you know not the funnest thing to talk about definitely not something that is like oh yes can we talk about clearances if i did a video on clearances on my saturday video it'd be like it wouldn't get any views it'd just be like oh clearances sounds kind of boring um but this is something that um definitely needs to be talked about okay so that is the that, those are the four corners so if you can if you can get those things down pretty good talk about those things when you're designing a kitchen, you're working with a designer, um, then this will be something that will be very beneficial. So those are the puzzle pieces all together of um, having a modern kitchen and a functional modern kitchen. That is a really important thing, that your kitchen is functional. And uh, if it's not functional, it doesn't matter how modern it is or how contemporary farmhousey it is, it's going to be a pain. It's going to be a pain. You won't be happy. So make sure it's functional as well as beautiful. So Let's get down to some comments. I hope you, um, if you're watching this on the replay, thanks so much for being here and watching this. And uh, if you do have comments or questions you want to ask, definitely put it in the comment section below. And I'll make sure that I look at those at least. If it's something I can answer, I'll try to answer it. And I, I read all my comments and I, I try to answer ones that I can. Um, but I don't answer I don't answer everything, but I do read all of them. But if you have a question, make sure you you put it in the in the in the comments and and I will. Um, be in there. I'm always in my comment section and try to keep on top of it. Um, and if you do want to work with me, the website is www.mtkd.ca. And that will just, you know, bring you up all the different things I offer if you want to work with me in terms of uh, designing a kitchen or just having a consultation, which is like the two of us brainstorming the heck out of your kitchen design. And it's really valuable for people. So uh, you can have, you have my word that'll be a valuable experience if you're trying to do that. All right, enough of that. I haven't been looking at any of the comments, and uh, so let's just see here. And before not too long, we'll give it another few minutes. We have 20 entries so far, so put in that hashtag #MTKD so you can have your comment selected as comment of the night. Do that. Ask a question. Put it in there, and we will look through. But I want to just look through here and just see what we can find before we select a winner. And, uh, okay. And of course I'm kind of down for further in the feed. So I like my washer on my left when right handed, when rinsing plates, you can still hold the spray and still reach into the dish and into the washer with rinse plates. Cool. Right. doesn't have to be on the right. Mine's on the left, but that's not why I said it. I just said it because I, I think that, you know, it doesn't need to be on the right. Clearance around the island was one of the hardest decisions I had to make in our kitchen right now. Yeah, Mark, definitely, because, you know, it really does matter. And it's like, it comes down to, can the island, because can we get a bigger island? 
And um, but if it, if you can't move around that kitchen, it's it's not going to be good. <sighs> yeah. Well, that's cool. The thing here's the thing, right? Mine aren't either. I always advocate advocate for the right clearances, prop, good clearances, the best you the biggest you can. But when it comes down to it, it really is into the in the client's hands and what they what they want. Here, so here you go. <laughs> clearance is important. I had to remove my uh, a cabinet door handle in order to be able to open my oven all the way. That is what I'm talking about. It's like hindsight is 2020. You're like, no, what? So that to me sounds like a pretty small clearance. And, um, but you know, you, you learn a little bit these things as well. <laughs> I wish I could think of a question. <laughs> You should put a hashtag MTKD on that. It could have been that this could have been the comment of the night. Who came up with the idea of putting drawers in corner cabinets? Well, you know, the corner cabinet is just one of those places that's just unfortunate. And so we just have all these different ways of trying to make it more efficient. And so I get it. Um, you've lazy Susans and magic corners and all the all those types of things and just having corner cabinets was one of those things that that someone came up with i don't know who came up with it i don't know who first designed it but um you know when you're talking about wasting space there it is right there corner drawers <laughs> definitely a waste they're not that popular either if you're thinking about getting them in your kitchen don't just just stop I don't know what the hashtag MT was for. I participated though. That's the main thing. You, you can be selected for comment of the night just for that comment right there. We're going to make a draw a little bit later. Add it in. Backsplash question. Should I stack long subway tiles versus brick pattern? I like the stacked look, but worry it'll be dated in a few years. I'll tell you what looks dated right now brick pattern. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what to say. I like the stacked look. I did it in my kitchen. That doesn't mean anything. It's just because I like that look. And um, I I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think you can be completely safe with a stacked look. I think it'd be fine for a long time. And uh, I really like the look of just stacked, clean, sleek lines. That's opinion, of course. My dishwasher will need to be on the left or else you won't be able to have someone at the cooker uh, and the dishwasher at the same time due to the U-shape of the kitchen and plumbing location. Yeah, so, you know, these these placements of dishwashers on the right or left all has to do with this this type of scenario. Where does it fit into the design the, design the best way? All right. Yeah, June, that's right. By the time it's dated, you'd be ready for a change anyway. I, I think you're completely safe with the stack. Uh, the stack. Uh, what type of light works best for ambient lighting in a kitchen? So, like, I, I, the type of light I think works best is something that's dimmable and generally like LED, some kind of strip. But you can all, there's there's so many lighting options. And so many manufacturers of different styles that I couldn't tell you a particular one, but just something that something that's dimmable for sure is something that you want to um, to go with, so that you can kind of up or down the ambience. You know, when you're putting them in uh, underneath the, the ledge of a countertop or putting them, um, and something that's that that can you can change the color, either temperature or or like the color of. Um, that I think that's important. So LED, I guess, would be the, the best way, something that's dimmable. And uh, I think you're pretty safe in that regard. You guys are great. So many great questions and comments. And um, I hope you enjoyed the live stream so far. Yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I can argue with you live. Um, this is a definitely something that has to be considered. 
if you're giving up corner space by blocking it off or doing something else in there, um, is it detrimental to the storage? And do you need that storage? Is it usable? Is it functional? So definitely a question, not, not something that you can just flippantly say, well, block the corner off like Mark does. Uh, definitely has to be something that you consider. <laughs> you can put a hashtag on this one. I'm going to pick this one as the, the, this. This is my pick so far for comment of the night. Is it a bad sign when your kitchen designer enthusiastically shows you a corner cabinet lazy Susan? Yes. <laughs> it's a, that's just not a good sign. You just turn around and be like, okay, listen, sir or ma'am, we are done here. <laughs> this has been fun so far. I like what you've done for me already, but. But I gotta draw the line somewhere. Um, I'd be questioning. I'd be questioning their morals. Uh, I just. I don't know. I, I'd be. I'd be thinking this one through. I'd be, I'd be losing sleep on that one. Oh my goodness. And I'm not even joking. Like I'm serious. If you were a designer showing you corner cap and being like, look, look at this with the lazy Susan. Give. Tell them to call me. I'm being partly facetious, of course. I'm sure they're amazing. Okay, let's move on. I can't stay there. I can't stay there. Clearance in my kitchen is definitely too small. If the fridge is open, nobody can get in or out of the kitchen. Yeah, that's a, that can be a problem. And you know what? The kitchen is the most used uh appliance that there is everybody can use the, the the sorry the fridge is the most used appliance and so if it's in a place where you can't get by when someone's using it being the most used appliance that can be a real problem and you know what do you do right what do you do now um but in a future renovation or a future kitchen those are the things you want to you want to think about or if someone's watching this saying well is it really that big a deal it can be a big deal for sure Late night rants. Does anyone have an opinion on pure style cabinets? They're MDF wrapped in laminate. I've heard some good things and some bad things. Well, I don't know the particular, if this is a brand, um, but I will give you my opinion on MDF wrapped in laminate. I don't have a particular problem with it. There's different ways they do it. They, they can polyester wrap it or they can thermal foil, thermal wrap it, which is basically like a, a heat shrink plastic. Um, the bad thing with those things, sorry, there was my camera, but I'll get it back. The bad thing with that is it can delaminate with enough heat. So the heat can allow the glue to delaminate and that can peel. Um, but otherwise, they're very good for cleaning. They're quite durable. And MDF overall, it's not a bad word in, in kitchens. It's just not. Same with melamine. It's not a bad word. It's okay. A lot of people can't stand, no, not particle board, not 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 MDF. It's okay. It's used. I mean, it's used so much in the kitchen design business and manufacturing. So, and I'll tell you what my opinion is here. MDF is very resistant to moisture absorption from, from, from humidity. Of course, if you have raw MDF and you pour water on it, okay, yes, you're gonna have a problem. That's why it's wrapped, but moisture in the air, MDF is really resilient to. And the problem is with wood, any kind of wood, wood is it's alive it's breathing it's living it's not alive in that sense but it, it absorbs the environment in a different way so your doors can swell um, if you have a modern kitchen for sure if you have a slab door that's wood that door can warp depending on the size specifically that door can warp um in different at different times of the year if you live on the coast you live in an environment that's um you know challenging with humidity so i'm not sure about pure style but i'm definitely not afraid of wrapped laminate doors um, in fact, that's what I'm getting from my front and center, which are sending me doors for my kitchen renovation. And um, they're an MDF wrap door. And I don't have any issue with them at all. I will be challenged on this. Believe me. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. Ah, uh, there you go. You put the hashtag on it. Cool. Uh, we'll give it another minute here, and then we're going to pick a winner or maybe a few winners. <laughs> no fighting you know when it comes to kitchen design a lot of this is a lot of this is fair. yeah okay except for corner cabinets i just have a definite opinion on corner cabinets um and it just is what it is but you know you have to have you got to stand by your guns you know you got to have your opinions right that's what makes the world go round 
And of course I do it with a good heart, you know? It's not, I don't mean, I don't have any ill intention when it comes to, except for that designer with the corner cabinet, Lazy Susan. But other than that, there's no ill intention here. This is all, this is all, all for love. Um... I should be your favorite designer. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, let's do this some more here. A couple more. I'm going to jump in. Oh, your question got lost. Ask it again. A lot. Of, I'll, I'll, I, if I lose a question from anyone, my apologies. I just don't see them all because they come in. Um, but throw it in again. See if I can see it here before we pick a winner. Does anyone offer plexiglass cabinet doors without frames? I don't know about that. I can't say I've heard of plexiglass doors, but Google might know. We, we can have our opinions with crushing others' opinions. Right. <laughs> some things are just wrong uh all right listen when it comes to there you go when it comes to uh corner cabinets um this is what it is i have ikea cabinets coming tomorrow thinking of turning them into push to open instead of traditional handles would that work it will work but i do find that that little piston mechanism um over time and not a lot of time breaks down a little bit. So that would be my only consideration with those. Here's the thing. You can always add handles later. So if you want to try that, then by all means, I'd say go for it. I think it's a cool feature. I, I have a couple cabinets on in my kitchen, but they have the push to open function and they're not even cabinets that we use a ton of, but the, the push mechanism just, it, I don't know what it is about those little pistons um, that, you, that, that, that are mounted. They, they can just, I don't know, they just wear out quickly. So just be careful of that. But I would say try add handles later. It's not not hard to add handles at any time um, because your doors won't be drilled. So you can you can have doors drilled and just put in knobs or pulls or whatever you want. Um, so yeah, I, I would say go for it. I think it's I think it's a cool feature. I just think it breaks down quick. I, I don't know if this is IKEA specific, excuse me, um, but it's something to keep in mind. And a good point by Jim. They're replaceable. So yeah, you can also just replace the pistons if they break down. So there you go. Go for it. I would say go for it. Recently renovated our kitchen and the space has six doors. Three of them are double doors. My biggest regret is that I didn't find your content in time. <laughs> well, at least you're here now. Helping others. <laughs> There you go. Push. They do track more fingerprints. Not a deal breaker, just consideration. Yeah, I agree. It could. They could be a little more. Uh, you got your elbow, your knee too, I guess. Or your, you know, you bump them like that, or head bunt them. So, well, that would probably be kind of greasy too. <laughs> Depending on how oily your skin is. Um, so there you go. All right. If I missed your comment, my apologies. But hopefully, hopefully, you put in hashtag MTKD. We're gonna pick a comment of the night. And then we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to share my screen. We've got 27 comments. This is your time to get them in if you want to now. is uh, put, your, put your quick comment in there, your question, if you want to. And we will go with this. I hope this is fun. I have no idea. Are you ready? Who hasn't hit the thumbs up yet? And i seen that Jackie's not here. I noticed that. Don't know where Jackie is, but um, we do miss her tonight. So hopefully... Uh, but, you know, Jackie's like world traveling. She's all over the place. She has meetings in, with, with China and she's in Mexico. So she's, you know, she's a mover and a shaker, that Jackie. So we got to uh, give her some slack, but we do miss you, Jackie. Um, hopefully you'll be around again next week. And uh, hit that thumbs up, of course, when you're coming in the door. Let's go to the draw. We got 27 entries. Come on, let's get 30 entries, folks. Come on, let's do it. Let's get 30 entries. All right, 28. Come on, a couple more. Let's just do this. I like it. This isn't the comment of the night, but this is one I'm picking right now. This program has been completely so helpful in my current kitchen model. I'm so thankful 
that is uh, that is something that uh, my content helps people with because that's really the point. So thanks so much for mentioning that. I really do appreciate it. And um, Jackie's Carmen San Diego. <laughs> Hashtag MTKD. Come on, Phil. Get with the program, man. There you go. We're at 29. Come on. Almost at 29. I think we're going to get there. Yeah, we missed Jackie of all trades for sure. All right. Let's just refresh this thing. All right. Come on. All right. Let's just. All right. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. I had a good demo lesson. All right, here we go. Let's hit draw. All right, we're at 30 entries. I love it. Thank you so much. Let's go. Bam! Here we go! Comment of the night. Better not be me. That would be horrible. I'll pick a new one. Winner! Adam is the winner! What was the comment? Does it say? I don't know. I've never done this again. I don't know. Where's the comment? It just, well, Adam, you're the winner. You had the comment of the night. We don't even know what it is. What's wrong with this thing? Okay, that's too bad. I thought that would be much better than this. I hyped this up so much without testing it. Erg, Mark, what are you doing? Oh, let's just pick another winner. Um, let's just draw one more time. <laughs> just for fun. Just to see your name in lights. I don't know. I picked the comments. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, Susan Phillips, all right, yay, comment of the night. <laughs> oh my goodness, all right, so I have a, I, I'm gonna have to go to stream here and say, hey, you gotta put the comment that you selected, because how do we know? We don't know. All right, everyone, that was fun. I'm sorry that it didn't work out better than that. I thought it would definitely at least show you the comment, but oh well. Anyways, that's all fun and dandy. Hope you had a great time tonight with me. I certainly enjoyed having you along with me for the ride. As we talked about modern kitchens, putting together that puzzle, figuring out how to make it functional, having a little fun in the in the, in the chat. And of course, if uh, you do have a question that you want me to answer, uh, you know, drop me an email. Of course, I love to answer emails. And you can do that at... Uh, uh, da, da, da. Nope, that's my, right here. Uh, Mark at mtkd.ca. And uh, of course, visit the website if you want to you know, do a personal one-on-one -on -one consultation or some kind of design uh, you know, solution for yourself. Of course, be here next Wednesday as well. We'll be live again talking about something kitchen design related. And maybe uh, we'll do another kitchen design style. We'll talk about that. And maybe some other features of function that we didn't specifically mention tonight. And uh, of course, um, this coming saturday my video we are going to talk about million dollar homes and what the kitchens in those million dollar homes looks like i'm going to react to kitchens that are on realtor.com that are million dollars in new york and chicago and boston and denver and halifax in toronto vancouver and maybe in boise idaho i don't know what's the difference between million dollar homes and the kitchens that are in them what will we see are they deserving of a million dollar home? Because uh, it'd be interesting. Where in, where in the world, in North America at least, can we buy a million dollar home and get a million dollar kitchen? No, that doesn't cost a million dollars, but one that's worthy of a million dollar home at least. So have a great